Welcome to MEM 05005, Carry Out Mechanical Cutting. Welcome to Pertech Learning and Development. This lecture is a supplement to your student workbook and other resources made available to you. Make sure you download and review the learning manual as this will help you complete the online quiz and prepare you for the practical assessment. Before we continue, let's have a look at some of the student resources available to you. If you don't have access to a desktop publishing suite like Office 365 or Microsoft Office, a LibreOffice is a good free alternative, which will run on all major operating systems, uh, Windows, Linux, and Apple. Just a reminder, if you have a Google account, you have free access to their cloud publishing applications like Docs, Sheets, etc. You can save and download your files in all the major formats like Word and PDF, and you get 15 gigabytes of free cloud storage. Don't forget to check Moodle regularly for the latest announcements and additions to the resource section. Here's an example of a work instruction, which I downloaded from Moodle. You can knock off all your quizzes on the go with the Moodle app. You can download this app for all the major portable and mobile devices. All the risk assessments, work instructions, and safety data sheets used in this unit were downloaded from PConnect. If you don't have access to PConnect, you can download them from PMoodle. All the part numbers and specifications discussed in this lecture were referenced from the Pertech product catalogues. These can be downloaded or viewed online at www.pertech.com.au. The majority of information covered in this lecture was referenced from the Fitting and Machining Trade textbook. It is highly recommended you get your hands on a copy of the Fitting and Machining Trade textbook. You can purchase it online at www.machineryhouse.com.au. Pause the video now so you can record the web address at the bottom of the screen. This week's featured YouTuber is Cutting Edge Engineering Australia. This vlogger's YouTube page is dedicated to heavy machinery repair. Relevant to this week's unit, the vlogger is using cutting machines to repair hydraulic cylinder barrels. Pause the video now to record the YouTube address at the bottom of the screen. Think, plan, do, review. What am I doing? How am I going to do it? Getting the job done and then reviewing my work. What are we learning today? Today we are looking at metal cutting techniques. We're going to look at cutting or metal removal. Then we're going to look at shearing or basically metal separation. And finally, we're going to look at thermal cutting. Firstly, we're going to look at cutting or metal removal. First type is the chip type using band saws, horizontal saws, power hack saws, cold saws, or portable saws. And the second metal removal method is the abrasive type. 
cutoff saws, angle grinders, etc. When do we use chip type metal removal? Or when do we use abrasive type metal removal? Rule of thumb, softer materials, we use chip type metal removal. Harder materials, we use abrasive type metal removal. The first type of chip type cutting machine we're going to be looking at is the vertical bandsaw. The vertical bandsaw consists of a continuous butt welded blade tightened across two pulleys orientated in a vertical configuration. The blade is steadied and aligned near the workpiece. The throat height of the bandsaw can be adjusted for different thicknesses of material. Machines are classified by maximum material thickness, horsepower and speed. In relation to the vertical bandsaw, it is important to remember that the material is introduced to the blade. This enables the cutting of tight corners and radii. Some more sophisticated vertical bandsaws have the ability to automatically feed material to the blade and material feeding mechanisms can be purchased as an optional extra on some bandsaws, vertical bandsaws. In this video, we can see the 25 millimeter thick aluminium being cut on the vertical bandsaw. Obviously, the operator has selected the correct blade and cutting speed for the material. We will be investigating blade types and surface speeds and cutting speeds later on in this tutorial. Closely related to the vertical bandsaw is the horizontal bandsaw. The main difference is that on a horizontal bandsaw, the blade is introduced to the material. With the horizontal bandsaw, the speed in which the blade cuts through the material can be controlled. This is called the feed rate. Not to be confused with surface speed, which is the amount of blade that passes through the material per minute. And this is usually specified as meters per minute. Both vertical and horizontal bandsaws can be supplied with coolant pumps. In the video, the feed rate on this particular horizontal bandsaw is controlled by a pneumatic cylinder, which uses gravity as a source of energy, and a bleeder valve to control how fast the blade is fed through the material. Bandsaw blades for vertical or horizontal bandsaws come in many different tooth forms and configurations. They can be purchased as a ready to use spare part or as a continuous roll, which has to be cut and bud welded in situ. Some bandsaws come fitted with a blade cropping and welding attachment. You can also purchase blade welders as standalone units. Blades are specified in teeth per inch or teeth per 25 millimeters. As you can see from the table, the number of teeth depends on the material that we're cutting. We have selected the correct blade. Now we have to set the correct speed. 
as we can see on our speed indicator, we are set to about 47 metres a minute. The speed selector chart tells us this speed is suitable for steel, cast iron, but not stainless steel. When it comes to cutting speeds, the harder the material, the slower the surface speed. Referring to the bandsaw surface speed table from the machinery's handbook, we can see how our general purpose 1030 median carbon steel has a surface speed of recommended surface speed of 101 meters per minute compared with 4140 which is harder and that's down to 73 meters per minute cutting speeds for drilling turning and milling are also specified in meters per minute a formula or chart is used to convert meters per minute to rpm in those cases we will look at this in detail in the turning milling and drilling unit Let's now move on to the power hacksaw. Everybody's familiar with the humble hacksaw. This is a motorized version. The reciprocating power hacksaw is typically driven by a crank. As with the horizontal bandsaw, it's the blade that's introduced into the workpiece or material. The blade can be either gravity fed or hydraulically or pneumatically fed into the workpiece. These machines are available with or without coolant pumps. This particular power hacksaw has a cutoff switch once the blade reaches the bottom of the cut. As with any cutting tool, the cutting tool needs to be matched to the material that we're cutting. This should look familiar. The number of teeth on the blade are determined by the material we're cutting. Surface speed is important and is dictated by the material we're cutting. In the case of a reciprocating saw, the number of strokes per minute multiplied by the stroke distance equals the surface speed. This particular machine's crank speed is adjusted by pulleys. Take note that not all power hacksaws have speed control. Here are some examples of some do-it-yourself power hacksaws. Let's have a look at the cold saw. A cold saw uses a rotating blade to cut through material. It is closely related to the drop saw commonly used in the woodwork industry, but of heavier construction with more sophisticated cutting blade geometries. These machines are available with or without coolant pumps. Blades are available in high speed steel and cobalt alloys and can be tungsten tipped. Colsal blades can be sharpened and re-tipped if necessary. Blade type is important, but so is cutting speed. On the above colsal control, I only have two speeds, fast and slow. Referring to the surface speed chart, if I was cutting aluminium, I would have to set the machine on fast. And if I was cutting steel, I would have to set the machine on slow. For example, my RPM conversion chart tells me that for a 300 millimeter diameter blade, I need to be rotating at nine revolutions per minute for cutting alloy steels. But for free machining steels, 47 revolutions per minute. We will be looking at 
conversion formulas, surface speed to RPM, in more detail in the turning and milling unit. Reciprocating saws, a close relative to the power hacksaw, but a portable version. These can be either electric, mains powered or battery powered, or pneumatic. In the video, the reciprocating saw was fitted with a metal cutting blade. Here's an example of a blade selection chart for a reciprocating saw. As we can see, the different teeth per inch or teeth per 25 millimeter recommendations for different materials. And if there is speed control on the reciprocating saw, the softer, the faster, the harder, the slower. Cutoff saws or abrasive cutoff saws. Abrasive cutoff saws are usually utilized when the material that we're cutting is hard. The abrasive cutoff saw works by means of rapid revolving of a thin abrasive wheel. As the abrasive grit dulls, it escapes the bonding agent thus releasing or revealing new sharp abrasive grit. A fair amount of heat is generated. Care should be taken not to alter the mechanical properties of the component that we're cutting. We were looking at metallurgy types of metals and heat treatment in a future unit. As with metal cutting, abrasive cutting requires the correct selection of the cutting wheel. Pictured here is a cutting wheel selection guide, thickness, size, material and application. The angle grinder, the portable relative of the cutoff saw. Angle grinders come in a large variety of sizes that can be electric, mains or battery powered or pneumatic. As with the cutoff saw, wheel selection is critical to getting the job done safely and efficiently. Angle grinders are dangerous and can cause serious and life threatening injuries. Always use appropriate PPE and ensure that the angle grinder is in good condition before using it. Remember, tag, isolate and report any faulty power tools. Water jet cutting. Water jet cutters utilize high pressure water mixed with abrasive particles to wear away material. Water jet cutters are useful for cutting hard and heat sensitive materials. As we can see from the diagram, the water and abrasive particles are mixed together in the mixing tube ahead of a abrasive resistant diamond or ruby nozzle. As with cutting tools, the appropriate abrasive grit needs to be selected for the application. Abrasive grit can be recyclable or single use. Shearing type metal cutting. Think of how a pair of scissors works. Let's have a look at shears and guillotines. Shears come in many sizes and configurations. They can be bench mounted or floor mounted. They are usually classified by the thickness of the material they can cut and the size of the cut.
Let's look at the big brother of the middle shear is the middle guillotine. The guillotine can be foot operated, lever operated or motorized. Guillotines are also available, completely computer controlled. Nibblers and shears are available uh, in electric, battery and mains operated, and pneumatic. Pneumatic and electric chisels are also invaluable for cutting off seized bolts, strip bolts. Will a tin snip, side cutters, or manually operated nibbler do the job? We have looked at chip type cutting. We have looked at abrasive type cutting. We have looked at shear type cutting. Now let's look at thermal type cutting. Firstly, let's look at oxy fuel cutting. Oxy fuel cutting utilizes a fuel gas, usually acetylene and oxygen to cut metals. Oxy fuel cutting is a chemical reaction between pure oxygen and steel to form iron oxide. It can be described as a rapid controlled rusting. When the lever is pressed on the oxy fuel cutting torch, pure oxygen is directed towards the heated area in a fine high pressure stream. As the steel is oxidized and blown away, it forms a cavity. Oxy fuel cutting is only suitable for ferrous metals. That's metals with iron and carbon. It is not suitable for metals like aluminium, nickels, brass, or copper. Oxy fuel cutting is suitable for materials three millimeters to 300 millimeters thick. Plasma cutting. Plasma cutting is a process that cuts through electrically conductive materials by means of an accelerated jet of hot plasma. We can liken plasma to a wire carrying electricity. In the case of plasma, it's a gas carrying electricity or conducting electricity. Typical materials cut with a plasma torch include steel, stainless steel, aluminium, brass and copper, although other conductive metals can be cut as well. The gas commonly used with plasma cutters is compressed air. Sometimes nitrogen, hydrogen and argon are used for specific applications. Plasma cutters can cut from half a millimeter to 150 millimeter thick material. Plasma cutters are usually rated by the thickness of the material they can cut and the size of the material that can sit on their bed. Plasma cutters are available in portable configurations. For example, a 40 amp unit will cut through 12 millimeter mild steel plate.
Laser cutters. Laser cutting is by far the most versatile and becoming the most popular method for cutting metals and non-metal parts. Rubber, leather, plastic, timber. This technology is used in every major industry from ship and car building to machinery, furniture. A laser is basically amplified and focused light energy. The word laser is an acronym for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Standard lasers can cut up to 25 millimeter thick carbon steel. Some 20,000 watt units can cut up to 50 millimeter thick carbon steel. Carbon gouging. We've already seen that we can use oxy fuel to burn away material. We can also use an electric arc to burn away material. In the case of gouging, we use a carbon electrode to burn the material away. You will often see the gouging process in the fields of metalworking, mainly foundries, steel construction, shipbuilding, and heavy equipment manufacture and repair. Gouging is a popular method of removing defective or old welds in order to repair or dismantle equipment, often seen in heavy earth moving equipment repairs. Gouging can be performed purely with a carbon electrode or in a carbon electrode with compressed air assistance.